Today, I'll talk about the abundance mindset and how some people still play short-term games when they could be building so much more over the long term. Artificial scarcity is a trendy marketing tactic. I see limited time sales, contests, and first come, first serve discounts, only five copies left at $20, all over the place. And it bothers me, because what's being sold are digital products, ebooks, courses, and software subscriptions. And in a world where marginal cost, how much it costs you to create one more copy, is mostly zero, scarcity just feels wrong. But it works. It taps into a part of the human brain that is a few thousand years behind the times. And the fact that we exploit this concerns me. In the abundance economy that I want to contribute to, artificial scarcity has no place. Or, or does it? Not all digital products are equal, and there are a few, just a few, good reasons to maybe employ artificial scarcity. I'll show you the risks of limiting things too much, why it backfires particularly for creators, and when it is okay to use this strategy. So let's get scarcity right. Artificial scarcity is a strategy that sellers employ to create a sense of urgency around their products, compelling their customers to make purchases mostly out of fear of missing out. They limit availability even though they have more than enough supplies. And this makes great sense in a crowded marketplace where most items are commodified. If everything is infinitely available, with plenty of alternatives that are just as good, scarcity makes sense. And for that, anything that makes a product stand out will sell it, particularly apparent scarcity. Our brains value things more when we think they're scarce, no matter if they really are. We are physical beings thinking in physical dimensions. And you see this on Amazon all the time, particularly around Black Friday. Time-limited and Quantity limited deals are pushed onto the Amazon homepage. The lucky merchants who get chosen for this often move 10 times more inventory than during non deal days. And do people suddenly need 10 times as many, I don't know, white noise machines? Is everyone all of a sudden interested in saving 30% on 12 packs of socks with puppies on them? And yes, all of these were deal suggestions on my own Amazon page. Of course, there's no genuine need for these things, at least not 10x, but with a discount and time running out, people who were on the fence already, well, they are finally motivated to commit. And that got me thinking. Artificial scarcity will create short-term financial gains for sellers and maybe even make those impulse purchases happy, but it can also have long-lasting negative consequences, particularly when looking at our creator economy. Because here's the thing, Amazon, that's purely transactional. Every step on the purchasing experience there is set up so that you never really know who you're actually buying from, unless you dig a little deeper. But if you don't, it's just all Amazon, it's all commodity. But that is entirely different for the creator economy. When you're buying a book or a course from an expert in your field, you're not just buying an easily replaceable thing that anybody else could have done. You're purchasing something that only that creator can create. You trust them and only them to make something valuable and you want that thing. You know it's worthwhile because your peers tell you just how impactful it is and has been for them and you're aware that a lot of time and energy went into making that product. It takes authors years to write a book. And a well-designed and executed video course is often months in the making too. And at the same time, you're very aware that digital copies of those things are incredibly cheap to make. I guess that's the whole point of the internet as a technology. It's just a massive copying engine. Every time you go to a website, you load a full copy of that website into your browser. Every video you watch is copied in small chunks onto your computer while you stream it. That's why the marginal cost of digital stuff is effectively zero. We are meant to copy digital information easily. And that's why it hurts to see things being arbitrarily limited. When sellers use artificial scarcity, they risk damaging their relationships with us, their customers. We feel manipulated. We lose trust in the person behind the product and any future interaction with them will be tainted by this perceived dishonesty that we experienced. And in an age where customers don't just know 
the creator behind the product they consume, but consume that product because they have a relationship with that person. This loss of trust will extend far beyond the product and massively undermine the individual creator using these tactics. We're all part of an intricately woven web of connections and relationships. Our success as creators is entangled with the success of those around us. There are no meaningless or purely anonymous transactions in a community where people watch out for each other. I often think back at the bar scene from the movie A Beautiful Mind, where John Nash, math genius and game theory contributor, gives an example of coming up with the best outcome for a group, for everybody there. And in the movie, it's about who dances with whom. Turns out that purely selfish choices result in a non-optimal outcome for the overall group. And in our seller bio world, it's similar. If we use scarcity tactics, we might make some quick cash because our customers fear missing out and they buy quickly, but we end up with a severely misaligned community where sellers can't be trusted anymore and buyers are viewed as quick cash grabbing opportunities. I don't want that. That's a massive long-term problem for any community. Burning your reputations for a quick transactional gain? That's never a good idea when you're part of a community that thinks in decades, that plays the long game. And communities know this and they won't easily forget. And one of the things they will remember very thoroughly is when somebody is enriching themselves at the cost of the most vulnerable in that community. Artificial scarcity quickly leads to inefficient use of resources because it encourages people to buy things they may not need or can't afford. And that's the problem. This hoarding behavior creates digital waste as people accumulate items that they never end up using. And you should see my humble bundle purchasing history. I spent hundreds of dollars on book bundles and stuff which I never read or used a single one off just to have them for a lower price while the bundle discount was still running. At least I know that Humble Bundle donates a part of their sales to charity. And still, I don't think I need these 104 or 5-ish ebooks that sit in my digital library there. Unread, unused, but also illegal for me to give away to somebody else. It was just a pointless purchase. Creating urgency around a product will cause some people to make impulse purchases that they may later regret. And the more those people talk about in their community, the more your reputation as a trustworthy community member will go down. And it's a global community too, and that is one of the biggest issues here. Consider what impact your marketing efforts have on people who live in places with significantly lower purchasing power. What's an impulse purchase to you might drain their whole budget for the year. Employing artificial scarcity can and will disproportionately affect those with lower incomes and or purchasing power. If you manipulate them into buying when they shouldn't, you effectively force people to allocate resources to products they may not be able to afford. That causes financial strain and your customers will not forget that feeling. Another thing they will not soon forget is being left out intentionally or just through negligence. When I activated purchasing power parity pricing for my books and courses, which means automated discounts for people depending on where they're purchasing from, I received an avalanche of emails telling me they could finally afford to purchase my work, thanking me for that. Several times I was told that no one ever thinks of them and if they can purchase stuff. Not only do people neglect to price their products to make them affordable globally, but then they make them hard to access for everyone. Yeah, that doesn't sound like the abundance mindset to me. Artificially limiting access to digital products which have this near zero marginal cost is an inherently questionable act. It prevents some people, a lot of people, from accessing valuable information or resources and it contributes to inequality and social exclusion. And yet, I know that we need to make money. So how do we get to a pragmatic approach here? It starts with encouraging building genuine customer relationships and offering products that provide real value to people. By focusing on this long-term customer satisfaction perspective and fostering trust, we can create a more loyal customer base that contributes positively to our communities. And of course, focusing on long-term relationships and trust building, that might not be practical for all businesses or creators who need an immediate income to sustain their work and their life. But Artificial scarcity isn't the silver bullet to immediate income. You can do tiny things. You can run a time-limited discount, but you have to mean it. Having this fake countdown timer that resets every time somebody refreshes your page, 
that will be obvious to your visitors and will quickly destroy any semblance of goodwill towards you, your projects, and your income. So just stay honest with buyers. Word of your manipulative exploits will spread really fast. And not all artificial scarcity is manipulation either, because there is something that benefits from being limited where you can actually employ this, and that is outcome-oriented and creator-managed communities and efforts cohort courses and digital single-purpose communities, they benefit a lot from having limited seating, for example. And since creators are real people with limited attention, limiting direct access to the creators makes a lot of sense. For example, Kevin Shen offers a YouTube studio course in which he guides his students through setting up their own home studios. And if Kevin would allow hundreds of students into his cohorts, well, he would never be able to give them meaningful guidance over time. Here, scarcity is a protection against mediocrity, and that's a good thing in the world where quality matters. There's another space for scarcity as well. When you're front-loading financial gains to jumpstart a business, no matter if it's selling a handful of lifetime deals for your SaaS business or having a few elite tiers in your Kickstarter campaign, limiting the show your commitment options for early adopters allows you to treat their upfront cash as an investment into your idea and the business that will make it happen. If you don't limit your lifetime deal sales, for example, you will run into unsustainable economics down the road. If you promise too much to too many, you will scale their disappointment. But generally, pre-sales are a good thing to keep limited. These are a few rare exceptions to a pretty clear rule. Artificial scarcity may offer short-term financial games, but it comes at a cost. Use that too much and you undermine your own reputation as an honest community contributor, who you should be in any case. And you will end up just being yet another marketer who only joined that community to make some quick cash. You don't need an immediate payoff. Playing the infinite game will end up much more lucrative than extracting profits from someone's fear of missing out. That's not enjoyable. So consider embracing an abundance mindset here. Forget about all these sales hacks and focus on building genuine relationships. When people see you strive for sustainable success and a positive impact on your peers, those people that see you, right, and the communities that they're in alike, they will reward you with their trust. They will recommend you, they will invest their time, energy, and money in you, and ultimately allow you to make more money. If something should be scarce, it's artificial scarcity in a digital world of abundance.